Hi guys, welcome to the video for 10.1.2 where we are looking at gravitational and electric field potential. Now, I'm going to actually begin with learning objective number four uh, and then we're going to backtrack to some of the other things because uh, I feel it's going to be helpful to give you an overview and to compare the differences between 10.1.2 and point, uh, point one and point two. Okay, so here, um, the, one of the last learning objectives for this unit is to associate the correct units with electrostatic field strength, gravitational field strength, and electric potential and gravitational potential. So these two are, um, in terms of field strength, we're talking about one thing there, and here we're talking about potential. So what exactly is the difference? Well, if we look at the units, we get a very good idea of what's going on here. So when we're talking about field strength, uh, strength, newtons, we're talking about uh, a force. Okay, so I'm going to use a, a green color here. So we're talking about forces here. And remember that forces have a direction. If I push onto something, if I pull on something, if I lift something, uh, there's always a direction associated with a force. So this is very much a vector quantity when we talk about field strength. Now, in terms of potential, you can see that this is work per unit mass and also work per unit charge. So we're talking about energy in some ways here, okay? Or it's highly related to the concepts of energy. So energy is a scalar concept, okay? So forces versus energy, or as we say in pot potential, we talk about voltages uh, or, or a potential difference. So the, the unit of measurement would be volts, uh, but it is what we would call a potential difference. And just to make this very clear then is Strength was from 10.1.1, my previous video. And today, we are looking at energy or potential difference, okay? So let's get back up to the top and get into our unit for today. Okay, so our first learning objective is to define what potential is. So you, we already just, we just saw that this is either work per unit charge or work per unit mass. Uh, and this is measured in our uh, potential difference, uh, also known as the volt. So potential difference, then the unit for that is the volt. Okay, so um, in terms of both definitions, they are quite similar. So gravitational potential at a point in a gravitational field is the work done per unit mass and bringing a small point mass from infinity to that point. The electric potential is a similar idea, but it's an electric field on an electric charge or a small point charge, as we like to say. So here, uh, I wanted to give you guys a visual of a diagram of what those words were really talking about. So I've simplified the, um, the diagram a little bit to draw one single object in the middle. And this could represent either the, uh, the large charge or the large mass. And then so we have the little charge and the little mass where, as we mentioned earlier, we are bringing it from infinity to that particular point. Okay? So that is what we mean in terms of electric and gravitational potential. Okay, so uh, in terms of potential, we are talking about a potential difference or a voltage sometimes, as we like to say in terms of the unit. Uh, now, we're jumping into gravitational here already. Gravitational. And so the gravitational formula is negative G times M over R. We're going to look at the derivation or how we came to this uh, a little bit later on. But this is sort of one of the formulas that we're going to be uh, looking at for today. Now, it has a negative value, 
and it increases with distance from the mass. So uh, we like to visualize this as the center of the mass has a large negative value, such as minus 100, uh, which we've indicated right here, so large minus 100, and it gets smaller, right? It's, get, it's getting to, towards a positive value. So it's getting smaller and, uh, sorry, it's increasing. It's increasing with distance. It's not getting smaller. It's getting bigger because it's meant to be increasing uh, with distance. Um, and uh, it's important to keep in mind that uh, the further we move from a mass, the greater ability it is for the gravitational field to do work. And this becomes very obvious if we look at this simple diving board example. So if you were diving from here into the pool, there is only a certain distance there. And then so over here, we may very well double that distance, 2D, and up here in the very top, we might have tripled the distance. And we have a pretty good understanding that the higher you are, higher up you are, the greater the potential energy that's going to be converted into kinetic energy. So we're con uh, converting gravitational potential energy uh, into kinetic energy. The higher up you are, the more energy is con converted. Okay, so that becomes very obvious when you think about that. The further away you are, the greater the potential to do work. Okay, or as we had learned in chapter two, the conversion from uh, one into another. Okay, so if we look at um, electric uh, potential now, or the potential difference in terms of electric charges, uh, what we're noticing here is that for a negative charge, it also increases with distance, and it also has a negative sign. And that's because if we think about from our perspective of a negative charge, we have a little point charge Q. I'm just going to make a little, a bigger point charge. Uh, that's going to be attracted towards the large negative charge, just like uh, in gravity, right? So they're going to be pulled towards each other. And so what we're talking about is that if we increase our distance, then we increase the potential for the, electro, uh, the electrostatic force to pull it down. Okay, so we're increasing the potential uh, the further away we are. Now, in terms of our positive charge, this is the exact opposite, right? Because again, we, we think about our reference point, which is always a positive point charge. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the potential has a positive value and decreases with distance. So the further out you are, the less of a potential difference or of a potential it has. Because you've already moved further away from it, it's only going to move further out. Okay, so hopefully that were, those diagrams were uh, clear in illustrating those two ideas. Now we're going to talk about the other part of the formula, which is about potential energy. So potential energy does uh, sort of derive from the potential difference, uh, derives from the potential difference, and this is, the, the potential difference is from the interactions of two different charges or two different masses uh, in relation to an electric field. So this is from the potential uh, of the field. And then we're also going to look at some calculations as well. So to understand this, uh, I'm going to introduce, reintroduce one of the formulas that we've learned about before, which is, I'm going to stick with gray, uh, voltage is work done per unit charge. And so if we rearrange this formula, let's bring Q over here. And so we're going to multiply that. So the work or the potential energy, so work and energy are sort of synonymous with each other. Energy is the... Uh, the quantity, and but we, we, we call it work in terms of, uh, we call it work, but it's, uh, it's measured as, as an energy, as measured as, as a joule, uh, is the actual unit, okay? So uh, the unit 
the quantity, either energy or, or work done, okay, is the charge multiplied by V, voltage, which is the potential difference, okay? So that's, that's why they're so closely related to each other. Okay, so in terms of our official definition is, first off, remember that uh, when we talk about field potential, it doesn't matter whether it's gravity or electrostatic, we're talking about a potential difference in the field. Okay, so something like from plus 50 volts to plus 100 volts, or we could go the other way. Um, but we're talking about a difference between two different points. Okay? That's the most fundamental thing that you need to remember. Because sometimes you do get a, a more simplistic question where we're just looking at or to calculate the difference between two potentials. Now, in terms of the energy, the, um, the electric potential energy, so this is the charge, electric potential, right? Electric potential energy uh, is the potential energy per unit charge. Oh, sorry, that's a potential, electric potential, sorry. Um, uh, and then we've got uh, the potential for gravitation is the potential energy per unit mass. Sorry about that, I copy and pasted that. That should say per unit mass. And we're going to look at the similarities between the two. So here we have sort of uh, our first formula. I'm going to use a different color just so it's easier to, to see. Let's use a gray here for my notes here. So this is a formula number one. This is all in your data booklet, by the way. So you're, you're given these two formulas. Okay, and then we're going to look at a derivation. Uh, obviously, you can skip the derivation if you uh, don't really care about how that was, but it, it is helpful for understanding. So what we're going to do first is we're redefining work as force times displacement. This was back in chapter two. And what we're then going to do is we're replacing force uh, over here with the electrostatic force or Coulomb's law, right? This is Coulomb's law right there, right? And then we're also replacing this force with the universal gravitation formula right here. And the nice thing about including it like this is that it gives us a different way of relating potential rather than relating it to work. We can relate it in a different way. And so I'm just going to use the, the pink color to cancel some of these guys out. Uh, R and then mass cancels out. And then so what we're left with is that the potential can be calculated as Coulomb's constant times the big charge, and depending on how far you are, you can find that potential uh, from the center. Uh, likewise, this is going to be big G times the big mass and that particular distance from the, uh, from the center of that object. Okay? So this is our other set of formula here, formula number two, and this is in your data book, as I mentioned. Okay, so this is in your data booklet as well, okay? but that was how we, we derived that. Um, this is just a different way of, of re-expressing that in terms of work, potential energy, work is potential energy, okay, and they're all, uh, both of them are equivalent to the uh, potential difference times charge, okay, so delta meaning the change or the difference in this case, okay, and likewise over here for uh, gravitational. Uh, another important concept here is that the uh, when we talk about a potential difference, uh, all we really care about is the result. We don't care about how we achieve that result. Okay, we only care about the differences. Okay, and so it doesn't matter if you took a more direct path, as it is in the pink, or if you took a really long detour. The difference is still the same. Okay? So that's like saying you earned, uh, you went from zero to fifty dollars. You earned fifty dollars, or if you had earned a uh, hundred dollars, and then you lost uh, twenty-five dollars. So let's say you're at seventy-five, and then you you earned another, um, uh, let's say that you're up to two hundred dollars, and then when you went back to fifty dollars. Okay. So we don't care about the process. Doesn't matter. All that matters is what was the difference from beginning to end, okay? And in this matter, they are exactly the same in terms of the potential difference. 
OK, um, let's get into some calculations now to satisfy our third learning objective. So it says uh, we need to consider two point charges, negative 5 and positive 5, both uh, nanocoulombs. I think that's going to be 10 to the power of negative uh, 9. Uh, let me just, I'm going to do a quick lookup for that right now, since I've got the data booklet opened. Uh, 10 to the power of negative 9. Nano is 10 to the power of negative 9. Okay, calculate the electric potential at points A, B, and C. So I've uh, got a diagram here with a little bit of color to help you guys uh, see the differences. So we've got three points A, B, and C that are labeled here, here, and here. And so if you think back about our previous diagram, actually, uh, uh, with charges being in between each other, if they're exactly halfway, they're going to be zero volts, okay? And so we're going to see the calculation in, in how that happens, okay? So first off, I'd like to write the, the voltage from the blue one plus the voltage or my, uh, so we're looking at the differences between these two. Um, and so we're going to be adding these guys together. Okay, the electric potential, okay? So it's a combination of both of them. And um, let's see here. So we're going to have, uh, let's see, I'm going to write this in blue. So this is going to be uh, KQ over R. And here we're also going to have in red uh, KQ over R. Okay, and then we're going to do our substitution. So when we do our substitution, we're going to have 9, 9 times 10 to the power of 9. And then Q is, blue is the negative 5, right? Negative 5 times 10 to the power of negative 9. So the powers looks like they cancel each other out. And then our distance is 4.5 centimeters. So that should be converted into meters. Uh, but since they're both centimeters, uh, we'll, we'll do the conversion. So I'm going to write that as um, 0 0.045 meters. And then our other guy is essentially the same thing, 9 times 10 to the power of 9. That's a positive this time, times 10 to the power of 9, negative 9. And then same distance, 0 0.045. And so because they're exactly identical, one's positive, one's negative, they're going to cancel each other out, and so there's no difference in the um, in the potential at that particular point. Okay, um, so it's not that it's moving from one point to another. So that we would have done uh, the potential difference, which is a subtraction of the two, but we're not talking about potential difference. We're calculating the combination of two different potentials. So that's why this is zero volts, and we're adding those two guys together. Okay. Um, now, C is more or less the same calculation. So uh, I'm just going to do a copy and paste because they're so similar. Um, and all that's really changed is the distance between the two. But because it's, uh, an, it's equal distance, they're both, um, they're both 10 centimeters. So we're, we're going to have the same values, essentially. So this is going to be uh, 10 centimeters, which is 0 0.1 meters. This is 0 0.1 meters. And uh, if, if that's the only thing that changes, then um, C is going to be exactly the same, 0 volts. Now, A is going to be a bit more interesting because we have two different potentials acting on it. So let's look at what that looks like. Uh, actually, I'm not going to. I think I only need to change the distance. So I'm going to remove that, and this is going to be A. Okay, so from, uh, from the blue, from the negative charge, it's much further. That's uh, 9, and then so that's 13.5 centimeters. And so I'm going to shift the decimal over. That's going to be 0 0.135. And then the positive... We also have, oh, no, no, I was going to say we also have 0 0.135. We only got 4.5 centimeters, so 0 0.045, 0 0.045.
Okay, uh, I'm just going to punch this directly into the, uh, the calculator here, uh, just to simplify things a little bit. Um, so, let's see here. Uh, this was... Okay, so the answer should be 670 volts. Okay, um, let me just double check that. Uh, I'm just going to do a little bit of algebra. So all the powers cancel here. So all the powers cancel. So essentially it's 45 is factored out times negative 1 over 0 0.135 plus 1 over 0 0.045 multiplied by 45. So uh, negative 1 over 0.135, 1 over 0 0.045 times 45. Hmm, looks like my calculation may have been wrong. Let me just try that one more time. 1 over point, no, point 0.135. Okay, let's try that one more time. Negative 1 over 0.135 plus 1 over 0.045 times 45. Yep, 670. Okay, yeah, that works out. Okay, uh, let's move on to our third example. So this time we have a charge of negative 1 microcoulombs. Micro is 10 to the power of negative 6. Uh, is moved away from an unknown charge, so we don't know what charge this is. The initial f and final electric potential is plus 200 and plus 100, respectively. So um, it's moving from 200 to 100, which means it's getting further away. So that actually sounds like a positive charge, but we'll, let's go through the calculation first and figure that out. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to rearrange this formula because we're looking for the work done in moving this charge. So I'm going to write this as work times the potential times, whoops, times the charge. And the next thing to do is to calculate the potential difference. So the potential difference, the potential difference is uh, going to be plus 200 minus 100, which is simply 100. And our last step is to make our substitution. So work is, I'm just going to write the formula one more time, which is 100 volts times the charge, which is, excuse me, negative 1 microcoulombs. And so that's, what is that, 1,000? Negative, no, ne uh, negative 1 times 10 to the power of 4 times negative 1 times 10 to the power of negative 6. One, negative 1 times 10 to the power of negative 4, okay? So quite a small amount of energy uh, to move this object um, away. So um, as we kind of indicated here already, we're, if we're moving from uh, plus 200 to plus 100, right, we're moving the object away from that to that. Uh, and then we have negative work done. We're working against the field. So uh, yeah, because we have a negative charge, don't we? We have a negative charge that we're moving, that uh, wants to be attracted to the field, but we're moving it away from it. Yep, so the work has to be negative. Yep, that works out. Okay, so that means this guy has to be positive. Okay, and we're working against the field. All right, the negative sign indicates that. All right, um, let's see here. I think I have one more example down here. So um, one gigajoule of work is done by moving an external force to an object with mass 250 kilograms. 
from position A to B directly against the gravitational field. So we're working against the gravitational field. Um, determine the gravitational potential difference between these two points. So we're given the work. We're given the mass. We have to find the potential difference. This is super easy because it's just a straight plug and play. So giga is 10 to the power of 9 joules. And divide that by the mass is 250 kilograms. And uh, there's not much challenge in this. Divided by 250. And that's going to be 4 million. 4 times 10 to the power of 6 volts. Right, because we're talking about a potential difference. Yep. Okay, guys, uh, that's example number four. Uh, and just to quickly review here is that today we're really focusing on the potential difference which is our voltage, our volts. Um, and we're also focusing on the idea of energy, okay? So uh, voltage being either work per unit mass or work per unit charge, and then all the concepts of energy. Now there is an individual activity that you, uh, I want you guys to try out, which is in 10.1.2, uh, simulating charges and field lines, okay? And so I'm going to switch over to my web browser, and um, we're going to look at uh, this right here. Okay. So simulating charge and field lines. This is the simulator. There are some instructions down here. Okay. And so I want you guys to go through this. Um, and I, I feel like there's quite a bit of stuff covered. So I'll probably do a bit of a, of an, a review lesson uh, next time. Uh, just to go over things, okay? So feel free to try sub questions on Cognitine. So try some, but don't be, uh, don't feel the need to do all of the questions because I feel like we did cover quite a bit today. Okay, guys, uh, take care for now, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.